I'm willing to throw in this, my latest invention. It's only in its prototype phase, but I want you to try it. It's the new Doctor Insano Neuralizer. These deals are out of this world. You will forget anywhere else you may have seen deals this good. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm immune because I have goggles. Nothing! Nothing! Nothing at all! <laughs> I'm lonely inside. Anyway, the group decides that they're completely helpless without their weapons, and so their only hope of overpowering the guards is Zell, because he's already got his weapons. Because, as he says, these weapons are these fists of mine! But first they need to get out of their cell, and since Zell is the one making the plan... Oh god. How much do you want to bet it's the stupidest escape plan ever conceived? Oh yeah, it's even dumber than the sick man routine. Zell runs up, knocks on the door, and informs the guards that the ladies have all been bitten by a poisonous snake in his cell and are all dying. And the guards, being the rock stupidest bastards in existence, immediately rush in to investigate. No you fool, don't open the door! The deadly cobras will escape! Zell runs out with the Moomba to bring back the weapons from a group of guards who just happen to be standing out in the hallway playing with all their equipment. Ah, his fists! Our shotguns are useless against them! After you get the weapons back, Zell brings them back to the ladies and holy shit, he's growing! Ah! Uh, yeah, well, for some reason, Zell and the ladies all swell up into 20-foot-tall titans and escape. Biggs and Wedge from earlier try to stop them, but unfortunately, they can't quintuple their size like the others, and they're quickly dispatched. It's interesting to note that I can seemingly cast magic spells and summon demons just fine in here, despite the anti-magic field they made such a big deal about just a few minutes ago. Once you're out, you brawl through floor after identical floor filled with robots and guards. It's incredibly annoying watching the game recycle the same map a half dozen times for every floor of the prison, as if it's not even bothering to hide the fact that it's deliberately trying to waste your time. Now, you can explore most of the cells where, despite the complex being under full alert, several of the prisoners will eagerly play cards with you. In fact, most of them actually have the balls to demand payment before they'll play cards with you. Even if I wasn't being chased by hunter-killer robots, would you ever pay someone 300 bucks to play Magic the Gathering with you? Fuck that noise! It's like the people who created this game have no concept of time, urgency, or logic. I can't believe how there's not a single, not a single screen of this game that I can't bitch about. After several more floors of this crap, the Moombas lead you back to where Squall is being held. At this point, I have to stop and explain something. Any time a party member joins or leaves the group, or you're forced to split the party, you're gonna run into a little bit of a problem. By this point, you've spent a ton of time already equipping your current party with all their GFs, their abilities, and their junction magic spells. The only thing each character maintains separately is their own inventory of magic. When you're forced to change your party lineup, those characters are almost always completely unequipped. They don't have any magic, and they don't have any GFs. And without GFs, they don't have any abilities. Without junction magic, their hit points and their melee attacks suck. So what do you do? Well, you have to equip the new party members, and the game makes this process actually pretty fast by allowing you to exchange all of one character's stuff with another's. And that's pretty convenient, but it also has the side effect of almost completely eliminating the individual character's sense of identity. You really just have three different configurations of GFs and magic. The characters themselves are basically blank slates with no distinguishing combat features except their limit breaks, which you'll rarely use. You'd think Zell or Squall would be better melee fighters than the girls, but it all really just comes down to what spell they have junction to their strength attribute. So now that Squall is joined again, I have to choose a new party and fix everyone's GFs. It doesn't take long, but remember, you have to do this every time the party changes. Everyone decides that the only way out is on the bottom floor, so they all decide to take an elevator back down even after I spent all this time going up. Only problem is, Zell has to stay behind to operate the elevator console, and this necessitates another party change, and I have to move all of Zell's shit to someone else. Once Squall and the others get to the bottom, they run into a dead end because beyond the escape hatch, there's nothing but a solid wall of Earth beyond, because apparently this complex is underground. Then the narrative switches back to Zell, who gets jumped by guards the instant Squall leaves. Now I have to switch all of Zell's GFs back to him again! Zell gets in big trouble, but luckily Squall swoops in to save the day. 
I am a little confused as to how he swoops down from above when he's supposed to be about 20 floors below Zell, but whatever, I don't fucking care. An overjoyed Zell rewards him with the most graphic, prolonged, succulent blowjob ever witnessed in a video game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes! Ugh. Ugh. Oh, this is hot, and I'm not even gay. Squall says no, but his hands and his hips say, God, yes! Anyway, since there's no way out downstairs, the group decides to head back up. Again! But they can't go up because guards with machine guns start to pin them down. But suddenly, Renoa and Irvin come from out of nowhere and hold the guards off while the others escape. And this forces you to change your party. Again! And once again, you guessed it, you have to run through a series of identical prison floors until you fight a giant robot at the very top. Once you're outside, you can finally get a good look at where the group has been taken. It turns out that the entire prison is some kind of huge, mobile, subterranean, three-pronged drill. WHY?! Why would you build something like that? Why would you build a drill-shaped prison? What the hell possible function does that serve? How would you even get government funding for something like that? What dipshit politician proposed a bill for this monstrosity saying, Yeah, it's pretty good, but you know what the modern prison system needs? It needs to be drill-shaped and able to tunnel underground. What the hell kind of sense does that make? Science, of course! Oh, shut up. Squall barely manages to escape the submerging drill structure, and the scene fades back up as the party has taken refuge in a fully stocked garage with two fully fueled Galbadian Army troop carrier transport trucks inside. What the fuck is this? Why is there a garage just standing here in the middle of the fucking desert? Why are there trucks inside? Who the hell do they belong to and where are they? Well, gosh, it's a good thing Cypher explained his entire evil plan to Squall before leaving him to die, because now they know exactly what the sorceress is planning. And she's planning to have the Galbadian army launch ICBMs at all of the gardens, starting with Balam Garden and Selfie's home garden. So they decide to split up. Squall leads a team to Balam Garden, while Selfie, yes, Selfie is leading a strike team, heads to the nearest missile base to stop them from launching. So they don't have radios, but they do have intercontinental ballistic missiles. And the good luck just keeps coming because Selfie just so happens to be driving a Galbadian Army troop transport, which just happens to have uniforms that fit them in the back. So the guards at the checkpoint wave them through without a second glance, because that's how every military operates when it comes to the security of their missile bases. And, of course, when the game hands control back over to you, you have an entirely new party to equip. AGAIN! The girls immediately run into some problems when the door to the missile base turns out to be locked with a card reader. A locked door to your missile base? Those crafty bastards! But the suspense holds for a full five seconds until Quistus mentions that she just happened to find a matching keycard in the truck. The truck they found in the desert! Someone left a keycard to a nuclear missile silo in the middle of the dust. Am I getting through to you people at all? Plus, think about this. You're sending a strike team to shut down a missile launch, and it's led by Selfie. You're letting Selfie loose on the controls to a missile silo. And when she accesses the computer, she's so stupid, your only options are to just press whatever and bang on it hard. Okay, guys, now, hang on. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. You crazy bitch, you'll kill us all! Major Dave, get me the president. Yes, sir. No, don't fuck with the error ratio! Now you'll be spraying nukes all over the country! Think of the innocent people!
strange game. The only winning mood is not to play.